Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the latest TUC uh, webinar, which make all your words matter. So nice to see everybody here. We've got quite a good crowd in, I see. I've been looking at some of the uh, the names and the locations from all over the country in the chat there. Um, before we get going, let's have a bit of housekeeping. So uh, those of you who are regular visitors will know that my name is Matt Quinton, and I am the um, the to lead of the TUC West Midlands Command Authority Skills Partnership, which puts on this, and we're a partnership between the local authority and the trade union movement. And um, for those of you who are in the West Midlands, you'll be pleased to know that, that we've been funding for another two years, so we're going to be sticking around. So if you need some support in your workplaces around learning, uh, we're here for two years more at least, which is, is great news. Um, before we get going, um, what I'd like, if people could do it, is put your names and put perhaps what you're hoping to get out of this in the chat. And I will be having a look at the chat and keeping an eye on it and perhaps bringing in anything relevant um, as we go along. Also, at the bottom, you'll notice an ask a question um, uh, tab. And there's one in there so far, which is asking, is this going to be on YouTube? Now, Yusuf has already answered that, and it, it, this will be put on our YouTube channel, as all our webinars are afterwards. And if you've missed any of the past ones, get on there, get on the YouTube channel and have a look. There's some really good ones, particularly around the area that we're talking today. Um, but if you've got any questions, put them in there. And then what we'll do is when our guest speaker has finished the presentation, then we'll, we'll be asking those questions and trying to find out some of the answers for you. So my name's Matt. I'm hosting this as always, but I am not alone. I am uh, accompanied by three other people. Now, one of them you can't see. Uh, that's Yusuf, but he is there. He lurks in the background. And Yusuf is the man with the technical knowledge that I certainly don't have. Um, and so if you've got any problems or any tech questions, again, put them in the chat, put them in the ask a question, and he will be able to support you there. Sometimes people do ask about the, the feed not being very strong. Alas, that is normally to do with your internet connection uh, as opposed to um, our end of stuff. And so we can't always help with that one. But again, it is on the YouTube afterwards. So that's Yusuf. He's uh, part of TUC Education. And if you ever need to know what's going on from that end of stuff, he is the man to contact. Um, I also have um, Janet with me today. Uh, Janet's my comrade up in Sheffield, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. So, Janet. Thank you, Matt. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, my name's Janet Johnson, and I do a similar role to Matt, but I'm based in South Yorkshire. So that covers um, Barnsley, Doncaster, Rotherham and Sheffield. So I work with union learning reps, employers, unions, um, community groups, really, in the same way as Matt, to promote lifelong learning. Um, we do hold regular... ULR network meetings. Uh, we had one recently uh, and we had a presentation from Mind. Uh, we also had a workshop from somebody who did uh, illustration. Um, and my colleague who works on the Just Transition project, she spoke to us as, as well and explained what she was doing there. Um, they're really useful. If you are a ULR in South Yorkshire, then please put this date in your diary for the next one. It's the 21st of June and it will be held in Sheffield. Uh, we've already got an agenda uh, coming together quite nicely. Uh, so we have a variety of things that we'll be uh, delivering. We've got Deaf Awareness from CAB. Uh, we've also got a guest speaker from South Yorkshire, Mayor Combined Authority. They're the people who actually fund this project. Um, and we'll also be having somebody who'll be talking about midlife career reviews and the new materials available through uh, Value My Skills. So please get that in your diary. The details and how to register will be on the Yorkshire and Humber website shortly. So keep an eye open for that. So thanks, Matt. Oh, and I've also got to just quickly mention, can I mention Karen at this point? You can. You can. Yes, we have, we have a new colleague. Um, Karen Lockney, she's based up in Northern Region from the Newcastle office. And I believe that she actually does North of Tyne, so she's covering that area. So if anybody um, is in that area, then please get in touch with her. I'm sure she'll appreciate it. Thank you. 
Yeah, and it's good that you mentioned, Karen. I mean, essentially what we're doing ever since the Union Learning Fund was asked is we're trying to get support for unions in every part of the country by working with the combined authorities. So the West Midlands one, which is me, was the first. Then we had Janet in Sheffield. Now we've got Karen in North Tyne. Let's see who comes along next. But uh, they're, they're quite exciting times. Um, whilst we're telling people about events, uh, our next ULR forum for all the Midlands, so if you're in the Midlands, come along. Um, it's on the 8th of July. Yeah, we just had ours as well, Janet. And... Um, that we're going to do an in person. We did in person for the first time last time, uh, and that's going to be at Coventry CWU office. Uh, last time it was 10, which was a bit early for some people, so we're bumping it up to 11. We've listened to what people have said. Uh, however, if you can't come along, there will be dial in facilities as well. Although, alas, I am not as organized as Janet, so I can't tell you what's on the itinerary yet because uh, I haven't thought that far ahead, but it'll be good. They always are. And what we should also know is that this webinar is part of a regular series. And the next one is all going to be about green skills. Uh, we don't have the precise date for that, but it will be at the end of May. So have a look at the, um, at the website. Um, the, the details will be on there as soon as we know. Now, before I introduce our main speaker, uh, I'm just having a look at some of these comments. Uh, Nikki says she wants to be able to say things simply and not make them complicated. Um, Sophie wants to improve branch communications. Robin uh, is a, a rep, but he's also a union researcher for the CSP. Um, what's that? I don't know. I, have I heard that before? Wants to get better at member communications. Um, uh, Alan wants to help with the branch newsletter. Um, and, and Gerbach says the subtitles don't appear to be working, uh, but uh, use of sorting you out with that one. So there we are. Difficulty with connection, Brownie. I'm sorry about that. That's probably your end, alas. Um, but there we are. So that's the housekeeping done. Um, without further ado, we have a, um, a guest speaker. It's Mary Colson from the Royal Literary Fund. Now, we at the TC have not worked with the Royal Literary Fund before, though some of our member unions have, and I have to say thank you to PCS for putting us in touch with Mary. I know PCS have worked with you before, um, but Royal Literary Fund, I, I, who are they? What are they? <laughs> I don't know. So, Mary, tell us all about yourself and your organisation. Okay, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Janet, and thank you, Yusuf. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today. It's... Um, it's lovely to see all the good mornings in the chat box because it's like a sort of strange shipping forecast, isn't it? From West Yorkshire and Margate and Devon and Wheatley and Bristol. It's really, really beautiful. Um, I'm in West Yorkshire today myself. I'm in Ilkley. Um, if you know the song, Ilkley Moor Bartat, it's actually quite pleasant here today. You can see the sun coming in. Um, as Matt said, I'm Mary Coulson. Um, I'm a writer. Uh, I'm an editor. And I work also for the Royal Literary Fund, which is kind of the best kind of charity I can think of as a writer because it's a charity that supports writers and writing. It was set up in about 1790 by a vicar in London who couldn't work out why his congregation was diminishing every Sunday. Um, he was getting quite concerned by this, thought that maybe his sermons were boring or something, but then he realised that a lot of his parish were authors and they were falling on hard times and they were ending up in Newgate debtors prison so he decided to set up a benevolent fund to support his parishioners so they wouldn't go into jail. And after there, some years after that, it got a royal charter. And over the last couple of hundred years, most writers that you'll have heard of, including Virginia Woolf, Charles Dickens, D.H. Lawrence, either all benefited directly from a grant from the Royal Literary Fund or donated um, in their wills. Um, famously, uh, well, famously in my world, A. A. Milne gave a donation um, as part of his estate when he died. And then if you've ever bought a fluffy tigger or a stuffed piglet, or in my case, a Winnie the Pooh hot water bottle cover, um, basically those those monies are now, those merchandising rights are now belong to Disney, but they paid the Royal Literary Fund for them. So for the last 20 odd years, the fund has been working in the community, paying writers to work with community groups of all kinds um, to help with their writing skills. And for the last four years, we've been working with various different unions, including PCS, uh, USDOR, Unite, Unison, 
all sorts of the NFU, um, all sorts of different unions it, to help people with their writing skills. And just from the questions, Matt, you've said already, people wishing to you know, improve branch communications, improve communications generally, newsletters, how to say things simply. Well, absolutely. Clarity is everything. And George Orwell said, you know, he didn't say it quite like this, but he pretty much said, never use a big word when a small one will do. And I completely agree with that. Um, in terms of my own background, uh, I'm a writer. I've written over 50 books for, for children, nonfiction books. I've also written scripts. I'm currently working on a script about the, um, the poet William Cooper and the priest John Newton, who was a slave trader turned priest. Um, there's a narrative arc for you. Um, and I'm also working on a children's novel. So that's me. Right. Wow. Well, I mean, that's really interesting. And I think, like, what, what were you, 1790s? I mean, I think that's the oldest organisation. I mean, we at the TUC, we celebrated our 150th a few years ago, but that, that kind of blows us out of the water. That is pretty, pretty impressive, I have to say. Uh, and, um, yes, I, I have Winnie the Pooh merchandise, so I probably have contributed <laughs> to you in a very small way somehow. Okay. I mean, this this webinar today you you said it's um all about um life writing yeah i mean yeah. and and i said oh so we're going to do a creative writing one and you, you said to me well no that's different and and i'm i guess the first thing is because a lot of people might struggle is that, well, what is the difference in life writing and creative writing because surely they're one and the same thing yeah yes and no um okay. and the distinction between expressive writing, life writing, creative writing is so, so small. But when we when we talk about life writing, we're talking about that one subject that you, above every single other person, the seven or eight billion on the planet, is an expert in, and that, of course, is yourself. And the Royal Literary Fund, in our work, um, we have a whole branch, we have a whole sort of swathe of writers working in what we call social sector and that's where I work I'm the assistant head of outreach of social sector work our mission is that everyone's words are meaningful and everyone's words matter and when we talk about life writing we're talking about valuing everybody's individual lived experience the stories they want to share the stories they find difficult to share the stories they're trying to find expression for creative writing would be something entirely different to that process um it's not just about you know i'm not talking about elves and witches and sort of fantasy things and of course that's creative but of course it can come from a place of truth as well but creative writing would be to take your own experience and put it to one side whereas life writing is we're trying to get to the heart of experience and ex and expression and it's to do with self-identity as well um, so there are sort of, you know, in my head, there's quite a clear line in most people's heads, of course, to put any words on a page is an act of creativity. And, you know, and I accept that entirely. Um, but there is just one subject that you are all expert in, and that is yourself. The stories that you wish to share, of course, the ones that you will never share for all sorts of reasons. Um, and that's your prerogative and very much your prerogative in this session today as well. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to unpack that a bit. Would, would that would it be right then also to say that the the life writing doesn't really encompass the side of creative writing that's commercial, like so? How do I get my book published? How do I, you yeah. know, if I want to, you know, get an article in a newspaper? How? What about word counts and all that? You're not bothered about word counts and the editing. Is it? Is it more about kind of telling that tale? Yes, it's about process, not outcome very, very simply, process, not outcome, the process of getting those words out, those, those finding expression to those experience. You know, if we think about something universal, like saying, I love you, what does that actually mean? How does it, you know, it's quite a sort of bland statement, really, isn't it? And it's a very easy thing to say. But what is what is it, what does it actually feel to that individual person? Um, what does pain feel like to an individual? These are all different things. They're not sort of pre-packaged. So life writing is all about process. It's never about outcome. And publication is always about outcome. 
not just about being published, but it's about outcome in terms of, as you say, word count or criteria or selection. Okay, and Janet, have you got anything to ask or add? Yeah, actually I have. Um, we've had a question from somebody who couldn't be here today, a um, PCS member, and they're actually interested interest in what you're just saying, really. Um, how is it best to start writing their own story? They're a, um, a dyslexic mm -hmm. civil servant of 21 years, and they're looking for some guidance oh, and advice. Oh, what a wonderful question. Um, dyslexia is something which a lot of people have either diagnosed or undiagnosed, marginal or a greater extent. And the first thing I would say is don't write, speak it. If, if you are at all dyslexic, very often it's much easier to speak your story. You know, most of us have got smartphones or access to some kind of recording technology. Um, speak your story, speak into it, go for a walk. Um, start talking into into your phone or into your gadget and see where that 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 speech takes you one of the great myths of writing is that a lot of what a writer does is not actually writing a lot of it is thinking a lot of it is walking a lot of it is talking a lot of it is researching um you know the actual hours of course sometimes there are many hours i i spend at my desk but a lot of the time i'm I'm mulling away on one or two things and I quite often, I'm, I'm not dyslexic myself, but I find it, there's a, there's a comfort in speech and I will often go for a walk. I mean, I live in a lovely place where I can go for a walk and not, not mind anybody, you know, I can have the place to myself on the, on the moors and I will often talk into my phone and I'll come back and listen and think, okay, well, that's, that's okay. That bit, oh, that's an interesting bit there because it's a sort of bit like archeology. span You're sort of digging down, aren't you? The top stuff is kind of, I'll oh, just get rid of that. You've got to dig down to find the good stuff. So it's, it is, there's a useful process in talking. Um, we have, um, the RLF has um, a YouTube channel. And on that YouTube channel, if you go to RLF, if you search YouTube for RLF Usdor, because we set it up when we were working with Usdor primarily, there are lots of videos that my colleague made, uh, writing exercises to uh, things similar to what we're going to do in this session, actually, that will help people to sort of prompt them. So that might be a starting point because we all need stepping off points, don't we? Um, what, whether we have, whether we're dyslexic or not, we need, you know, we have stepping off points and those those videos might be helpful. Okay, thanks. Yusuf has put a link in the in the chat. My guess is that it is the channel that you're, you've referred to. So okay. people can have a look at that. Um, I believe you've got some activities. Yeah, I think we should get going, don't you? We're going to type into the chat box. I will say that obviously only type into the chat box whatever you're happy to share. Um, it'd be lovely if as many of you felt as comfortable to do that as possible. We're going to try and make a group text and we're going to do something called free writing. That's the style we're going to do it in. And so that means we do not give a hoot about spelling, punctuation, grammar, because it's in your voice and we're typing at speed and we will almost certainly all make slips when we type at speed. I certainly do. We're going to try something um, and we're going to do it together because life writing, uh, you know, is part of writing for well-being. And I promise you that writing makes you feel better. It will make you feel more included. It will make you feel more part of something. And that's something in the last two years, certainly we've all had to change our lives and our means of communication, either, you know, online, Zoom, Teams, Crowdcast, your platform of choice. So we're going to try something today to try and narrow the geographic divide, because we've got people down in Cornwall and Devon. I'm up in West Yorkshire. I know there are people down in Bristol and Margate, I've mentioned already, and there may be other people further afield still. So, you know, let's try and lessen the gap. What I'd like you to do is into the chat box, I'd like to think about the last two years and I'd like you to type in something that you've done to make yourself feel good. And I'll give you an example. I'll type in, I want you, because I want you to type it as a command. So I want you to type it as if you're giving someone an order. So I'm just typing mine now. So this is something I did every night throughout the last two years and even though we're not really you know we're kind of out of all the lockdowns now 
uh, or hopefully. Um, that's what I did. Oh, lovely, Cherry. Thank you. That's gorgeous. So just don't overthink it. Just 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 type it as quickly as possible, because I'm only going to give you about, I don't know, 60 seconds. Um, but they're, they're all popping up now, aren't they? <laughs> it's loads. How lovely. How lovely. Brilliant. Oh, here they come. Keep them coming. I've got to give you about another 40 seconds. If you think of another one, write another one. And don't Do be ashamed. read a few out uh, for people who... I'm just going to come to that, Matt, actually, in a minute. Just let them come for a moment. Just keep them coming. Oh, Annabelle, I like that. Just a simple run. It's got a real power to that. Keep them coming. As I say, if you think of something else, just write in another, another one, but make sure you write it as a, as a command. Get to be bossy in this first little exercise. Okay, I'm going to start reading them. If you're still typing, keep going, because I want you to hear the cumulative effect of what you've written. Stand on the doorstep and look at the stars. Feed the birds. Adopt a cat. Watch a sci-fi movie. Go for a walk and look at the sea. Go for a cycle ride to the beach. Go to work. Water the plants. Embrace the seasons. Go for a walk. Sit in the garden and feel the breeze on your face. Walk through the countryside. Walk. Get your legs going. Feed the birds and squirrels. Make a place for them to feed safely. Take thinking time. Speak to your neighbours. Help someone learn. Go for a walk. Ring your friends to check they're okay. Wild swim. Run. Upcycle your clothes. Eat lunch with your partner. Dawn swimming. Exercise. Feed the birds. Watch them. Talk to them. Keep a stray cat and her kittens who now live as a family. Get well again. Ride your motorbikes. Prune the plants. Wash the dishes. Find three things you're grateful for. Learn a song on the guitar, learn to make bagels, plant something in the garden, play tennis, just walk, bake banana breads for friends, listen to nature, get started. Do some baking, eat something nice, be comfortable, upcycle furniture, grow something, cook from scratch, adopt a dog, try something different, open a nice craft beer, declutter the house, tidy the garden, look and listen, spend time with family and friends and help someone else. Oh, that's marvellous. You have just created an absolutely glorious text. Oh, buy an air fryer, even better. Um, how wonderful. Yeah, we, they can't stop now. They keep coming, don't they? Once you start thinking, they just keep coming. Would anyone like to suggest a text title for what you've just created? Mm -hmm. While they're coming up, I, I think that sounded like a poem when you were reading it. It was glorious. Mm, it is glorious. It's quite moving, isn't it? It's quite affecting. Um, and the different rhythms within the different sentence lengths. And then you just get a single word like run. And it just, oh, yes, it's sort of because we were all put on pause and some of us found it very hard to get going. And perhaps some of us are still trying to find it hard to get going. But would anyone like to suggest a title for what you've just created? Sarah, living well in a pandemic. I think if we did all that, we would be very living well, very much living well. Thank you. Life through lockdown. The collective pause. I love this. Be kind to yourself. Memories of life through COVID. Oh, Anne, yes. A road to freedom. Jane, positive moves. These are so lovely. The upside of, ah, oh, lovely, Nikki. Love the upside of life, surviving the pandemic. Yes, Kate, you're absolutely right. If you're thinking about this list, what you've just written is instructions for surviving a pandemic. So should it ever occur again, and please let's hope it doesn't in our lifetimes or in the next few lifetimes, if we have this list, these instructions, and we did all these things, not only would we have many more pets in our life, we <laughs> But we would be a lot very active, wouldn't we? There was all sorts of cycling to beaches, walking, get moving. But yeah, I, Michelle, I've just seen yours. Be kind to yourself. And that's what we should all be trying to do, of course. Yes, absolutely. These are such lovely comments here. Thank you, everybody. Um, 
Matt, I don't know if you've got anything to comment yourself. Um, no, I just I just found it really powerful. Like when they were then we're coming up, it, it was one thing, but when you read them out with the rhythm, mm -hmm. and and I don't you know you hadn't prepared that before because you couldn't. It just it just happened, and it would speed up and slow down, and I just thought it was really really. Yeah, wow. I, I I didn't think that'd be as good as it was. I don't know about you, Janet. <laughs> no, I, I I think really we need to be pulling that together, to be perfectly honest, and having it somewhere. Because it, you're right, it's very powerful stuff. Mm. And I think the, there's things in there that we've all experienced or felt at some time or hoped for. Um, yeah, so I found it really, really powerful. And it's quite interesting to have that collaborative Mm. um exercise really uh yeah. you know and and you can see people feeding off other people with the the um the things that are coming up uh yeah. you know and a few people have, have made several comments so obviously as somebody else has said something something's triggered yes you yeah. know and it's that sharing as well it's sharing experience and a positive take on it, it so absolutely and and you've all just written a text together and no one sort of thought oh no, I can't write or I'm worried about what, what if I get it wrong? There is no wrong. That's the mm. thing. This was your life. This is what you did. It cannot be wrong. And the fact you've shared it is, is it, you know, it's really moving. And I thank you all for that. Um, writing makes you feel less alone. And if you write collaboratively, then you get the immediate validation that you, you are certainly not alone. alone. I'd like to try a longer exercise, if that's okay, okay with everybody. Um, we're going to look at a poem in a moment and I'm going to read it out loud and then I invite your um, your comments on it. It's not a very long poem. And if you have any sort of uh, negative reactions to poetry or thoughts about poetry because of school or whatever, please, please don't worry about it at all. Uh, we're going to do an exercise based on it, but it doesn't involve any knowledge of the poem. So Yusuf, if, if you could put the poem up, please, that would be great. Okay, so this is a poem by a poet called Robert Seater, and I absolutely love this poem because it's not really a poem, it's just a piece of writing, and that's all poetry is really. So this is I Come From. I come from a suburb waiting forever for the train to London. From smashed windows, graffiti, fog on the platform, skinheads and fights if you look the wrong way. I come from clean handkerchiefs, dinner money, God, please and sorry a hundred times over, draft excluders and double glazing. I come from Chambers Etymological Dictionary, maths tables, 11 plus, look and learn, an almost complete set of Observer I spy books, a family of teachers and yet more teachers, an Orkney grandfather, a Shropshire grandma, from no accent at all. I come from kindness. I come from do, re, mi, the sound of music, Recorders, clarinets, a pianola, all the way from Scotland. I come from rats behind the garage and a man who followed me back from the library. I come from silence. I come from a garden, from my father mowing the lawn into the dark, from fences, walls, gates and hedges, Cuthbert seed packets, the perfect small garden, from the sound through the night of trains, trains trains so that's i come from by robert Seater, and i just welcome any comments in the chat box anything that you noticed anything that perhaps resonated and you thought oh i remember that i remember ironing hankies but you can't seem to buy hankies these days unless you're buying huge enormous ones um I wonder if anyone recognised or identified with anything in that poem, or if there was anything you'd comment on in terms of the rhythm. Just have a think about it. Have a look at the screen. While people are thinking, Mary, I mean, I'm looking at that. That that it, it's, it's very simple, isn't it? In a concept, it's just I come from, and then it's things you remember. Yeah. So you don't need to pre prepare all this or research or anything it's just to me that sounds like what came into his, his head when he when he was his childhood i mean yeah i think really, that, really powerful i think you're absolutely right it's almost like free it's the free writing isn't it if you're just thinking about those snapshots of memory 
I mean, the, the only bit where I think he's thought literary about it is maybe that final line of trains, 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 you know. But the rest is just, oh, yeah, and there was that, and there was that, and there was that. Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. well, we've got some comments now, so I'll shut up and let you read them. So, yes, it does. Roger, you're quite right. It, there is, it is atmospheric, isn't it? And, yes, Nikki, yes, it's got that kind of, you are on the train, aren't you? Or you're hoping to get on the train at least, yes. And we do all come from somewhere, Deborah. You're absolutely right. Um, music and recorders, yes, Kate. I wonder if you have that sort of sh slightly shrill music lesson at school sound in your ear. Um, what does Sarah say? It makes me feel a lot of things without him actually take, talking about his feelings. Yes, the impact is on us as the reader, isn't it? Rather than he allows that you to have your own response to it rather than telling you what his feelings are. Yes, Dale, I think there is a sense of belonging. Um, yes, Michelle, some parts will be completely familiar and some quite alien to you. Tracy, that's interesting. Yes, because I think he's about the same age as me. I don't know how old he is, though, and I'm not going to tell you how old I am. <laughs> um, Alan, how do you read poetry? I read it as I think it should be read. Um, I read it slowly. I tend to read prose very, very, very quickly if I'm reading a story. I'm a dreadful skim reader. And I and sometimes I get to the end of a chapter and think, oh, I don't remember what I've read there. So I have to go back. But poetry, I tend, lo tend to take longer on because it's denser. And if I take a bit longer, then I, I can understand it. Um, Debbie, I agree. It's a lovely mix of lines, isn't it? The length. And I'm glad you smiled, Susie. I, that's lovely. Yes, you're right, Debbie. There is no sense. There's no judgment on his observations. They just are. Ah, that's good, Dale. Yeah, mindfully. That's a really nice way of approaching it. OK, we're going to have a go at writing our own. And I don't mind if you do this in the chat box or if you'd write, like to do it separately on a piece of paper privately. It's entirely up to you. We're going to try um, another sort of style. We did some free writing for our first exercise this exercise we're going to do guided writing what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you a prompt and i'm going to ask give you about a minute maybe 45 seconds to write a sentence and as i say you can do this in the chat box but please feel free to do it privately on paper if you'd rather and we're going to use the frame of this poem as our scaffold we're simply going to start each sentence with i come from and then i'm going to give you the prompt and you fill in the rest OK, whatever comes to you in these next few minutes. OK, so to start with, I'd like you to think of a, a, a place you've lived. It can be the place you currently live in, a place you grew up in or a mixture of many places. It's entirely up to you. I'd like you to give a detail of a local landmark. Remember to start your sentence with I come from. So I might say, I come from Ilkley Lido, where it's never very warm. Something as simple as that. Feel free to put more than one local landmark. But just have a go and I'll give you about half, half a minute, 45 seconds. I come from. Like a public building um, in your town or your place where you live. I come from the wreck where we snuck in cheap cider. That's lovely, Sebastian. I come from the wind in the hills. Lovely. It sounds onomatopoeic. It's a lovely rhythm. Cherry, I come from the water meadows. I come from Cornwall and the sea. Oh, lovely. I come from Western Supermare where the seafront is lovely, but you won't always see the sea. That's true. I went there once. I come from Rothwell Label Club in the middle of a field. Thank you, Sean. Good morning, Mr. Dixon. That's lovely. I come from a village by the sea where the mist rolls in over the hills. Nikki, I want to come from where you come from. Susie, you come from the loch where there may be monsters. Anne comes from Colliery, Colliery Row in sight of the village school. What an evocative image. I come from Fox House with the lightning tree on the outskirts of Sheffield. Dale, that sounds like the opening of an Enid Blyton story. That's lovely. 
Okay, the next line, again, start with, I come from. I'd like a detail from the street where either you live or where you lived. So a detail from the street. So I come from, so I would say I come from cobbles with dandelions poking between them. I come from Messerschmitt angels. I come from a railway embankment, silence thanks to beaching overlooking the River Mercy. Mersey. Beautiful. I come from West London where I see the Gillette clock in the distance and know I am home. Colin, that's gorgeous. I come from Sun, Sea and Sand and the Turnip Turner Centre. I'm intrigued, Tracy. I'm intrigued. So I come from the street with the mural of the jungle on the corner. Lovely. I come from cherry blossom and green, green grass. These are just so lovely. So detail, you had the landmark, you've had the detail of the street. I'd now like a detail from the outside of your house. I come from the front door with the chip paint. I come from the overgrown front garden. I come from steep hills with tight leg muscles that power my cycle to school. I come from high fences. I come from a street with a lamppost that's turned on by the pigeons. Beautiful. I come from busted 100 year old bricks. Oh, I love that, busted and bricks. The plosive, buh, buh. I come from the house with the golden angel. Lovely, Kath. Okay, now I want to go inside the house that you're thinking of, whether it's that childhood house, the current house, or a mixture of houses. I'd like a detail from the inside of the house, please. So remember, remember to start with, I come from. I come from three ducks flying on a wall. I come from uh, Christmas decorations all year round. I come from China dogs on the fireplace, whatever it is. I come from no mo may with dandelions and tulips. I come from the terraced house with the dilapidated front porch. I come from uneven wooden floors. Oh, I come from the house with the lollipop tree. That's lovely. Okay, now we're going to just move on to sound because we don't want to overlook sound. I'd like to start, think of a song or a piece of music that you might hear in that place. Again, I come from, I come from Black Dyke Mills playing the floral dance. I come from the theme tune to the Muppets. I come from Coronation Street, whatever it is. I come from a piece of music. Oh, I come from coffee and fresh baking. I come from the Beatles booming daily and dancing with a beer. Lovely. I come from the sound of birds singing. I come from Russian marching bands on LP. Cool. I come from the empowering sound of reggae. I come from 80s music. I come from leaf and stream. Okay, now tell me a piece, uh, some food that you eat in that house. It might be celebration food, might be occasion food, might be Sunday night food. But remember, start with I come from. I come from banana sandwiches. I come from shepherd's pie. So now go to food, something you're going to taste. I come from burnt toast. They're lovely. I come from grandma's mince pies. I come from bread. I come from liver and onions. Yes, of course. I think we all do somewhere. I come from curried eggs and apple orange juice. Ah, I come from the vegetarian staple house. See, now we're all getting hungry, aren't we? Because I'm reading freshly made pizzas roasted rabbit, Yorkshire puddings. I, I come from meat and tatter pie with relish. I come from pig's feet. 
yeah, I come from um, pork scratchings, homemade ones. Yeah, that's interesting. I come from big porridge. I love that. I really love that, Alan. I come from fish and chips. I come from Neon Angel Delight. How wonderful. Okay, and finally, because we need to give time for questions, something I'd like a piece of transport that you connect with that house. And remember to start with I come from. I come from. I come from a yellow Ford Cortina. I come from a Doors tandem. I come from a space hopper that I pinched from my friend. I borrowed. Um, lovely, I come from the magic bus to Manchester. I come from the buses and the trains. I come from a red Laden. Neva, Niva, I'm not how you pronounce that last word. I come from my purple bicycle. How fantastic. I come from the only car I can drive. Thank you, Kath. I come from a car with lights operated by a foot pedal. Yes, wow, I come from a blue Volkswagen Golf. I, have, I come from a hand-me-down bike. I come from a Cossack motorbike and sidecar on the pillion. I come from black topped orange marina. I come from a Limon Picasso. I come from Kevin the Kawasaki in green. <laughs> I come from the 95 bus. Lovely. I don't know if you all have time to look at everyone else's comments, but if you do, you're all extending your answers as we go. It's absolutely lovely. Um, I come from weekends in family caravans. I come from freedom where adventures await. What a lovely line, Susie. What an absolutely lovely line. I'm just going to pause there. Um, because we need to allow some time for questions, uh, Matt. But um, what a beautiful, generous offering you've all given. Um, it's a very simple exercise. Uh, we were talking, Janet asked earlier about the gentleman um, or the PCS member who wanted to write their life story. This is a very easy way of starting to write all of, all of your life stories because it starts with those memories and all you need is a prompt to look what's come out already. And this is exactly the kind, oh, I come from Colin the Caravel. Ah, I know a Caravel called Monty. How interesting. They obviously always have names. Um, but it's um, this is exactly the kind of thing that we might do in a life writing class or workshop or in a writing for wellbeing workshop. So, you know, there's nothing scary. It's very safe. It's very collaborative. Um, and I thank you all very, very much for your very, very generous um, offerings. Absolutely wonderful. Matt. Okay. I, one, one of the problems with everybody being so active in the chat is they've not been asking questions. We normally have about eight questions by this stage, but everyone's been too busy actually getting involved, So, which is not a bad thing. Um, one thing I, I did, I want to go back to Alan's uh, question about how do you read poetry? Because... Um, and for me, my, we, we all have our own issues. And my issue is I'm a skim reader. I skim read everything. And that makes it really hard to appreciate poetry. And so, Alan, my tip is, if you're a bit like me, always read it out loud. Because if you read it, you, you miss half of it because you naturally skim read. Um, so, I mean, that, that's my point there. I guess whilst you know please please folks you know if you do have any questions now is the time uh, put them in the chat or in the ask a question at the bottom but mary i wanted to ask you um because a couple of people had said they were interested in using stuff that could help with the branch <laughs> communications so yeah. i think that you know um in some way or another. Now, I know you've worked with Ulster, you've worked with PCS, uh, various other unions. I, I, has this ever come up before? And is there anything that you would suggest for that? Yes, it comes up a lot. Um, and of course, the thing about writing, the, the better you can write, the more transferable those skills are. Mm -hmm. So um, we do, we offer various different courses. Uh, we have writers all over the country who deliver these courses. Um, sometimes they're online, sometimes they're face to face. It's very much what people wish for. And we can we, we've run workshops on general writing skills. We've run workshops on writing more effective emails. We've re um, report writing and case studies, the things that usually strike fear into people's hearts. Um, 
what else, um, funding applications, um, all sorts of different things, um, newsletters as well. Um, and, you know, the, the, the workshop offer that we have accommodates a lot of these concerns that have been raised about how do you get more effective communication? Because the best writing is the clearest writing and um, the simplest writing. Um, and the one thing I would say as a sort of takeaway tip is that writing is only about 10% about the writer. It's 90% about audience. So mm -hmm. if when you've written something, it doesn't matter if it makes sense to you, actually, you know, if it's you know, that whole, oh, I can understand it. Well, that's no good. If the whole point of writing is to be helpful to the seven or eight billion people who aren't inside your own head because only you are inside your head so it's terrific if you understand it but it'd be even better if those seven or eight billion could understand it so my tip is always to to think of the audience if your writing is not helpful to the audience then you need to simplify it and probably shorten your sentences but as i say we do we do workshops on on that but most writing of course is benefits from being confident um uh, i didn't write it in the chat but i come from silence like robert Sita. uh my father is deaf so i have a disabled parent and always have had and he left school at 14 because he's nearly 89 and back then that's what happened and he's a farmer so you know you're talking not very literate you're talking he can read he can absolutely read and he can sign his name but he can't write very well and so if I'm and because he's deaf and he can't sign, I have to write everything to him. And I have done my whole life. So so the importance of writing clearly and simply, um, not because he's stupid, he's not remotely stupid, but but he's he can't, you know, his, his, his literacy is limited in some ways. So so I learned very young that if you if your reader, if your audience doesn't get the message, then you know what you don't get a wagon wheel after swimming or you know you don't get the lovely shake and salt crisps the little packet of salt inside yeah you know so, so actually that's really helpful you know always think of who your audience is whether it's your branch whether it's your colleagues whether it's you know a letter to the milkman almost you always have to think of the, of the audience and be helpful to them Okay, and and quite a different question now. I mean, while we were doing that uh, that exercise, you know, I was kind of going back into memories and quite happy times. And I think you know, if you're feeling down, that could be quite a healthy thing to do. And it can, but um, there is, I'm guessing, there is a link with mental health. But you know, how, how good is writing for mental health? But also, you know, what's the difference between that and therapy? Because I. I yeah. You know, I think you probably say you're not a therapist. So just no, no, no. Really, really, my partner would say I'm absolutely not a therapist. No, no, there is a therapeutic value to writing. Um, absolutely. But we are not therapists. No one in the RLF is, is a therapist. We're all writers. Um, but we all acknowledge there's a therapeutic value to the writing process. And certainly I feel better from having shared this experience with everybody today and been privileged to read what they've written. Everybody's written. Um, I feel uplifted. There is a wealth of academic research about the long term benefits of life writing, writing for well-being, expressive writing. You know, you can find any number of academic studies to help which help alleviate mood, depressive symptoms, post-traumatic syndrome and long term positive health outcomes. There's a wealth of academic research um, in the here and now. I would say writing makes us feel better, very simply. And the better you can write, the more opportunities you have and the, and the, and the happier you are. I mean, I, I firmly believe that. But there is a wealth of academic research to back yeah. that up, um, which you can easily Google or read about. Um, but I think that I think just the way people have responded today bears witness to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although they haven't responded with questions, so we don't have any more more questions at the moment. Uh, unless Janet has one, um, I don't know, or any comments to proffer? I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Um, that exercise that we've just done, and I think like a lot of people today who've, you know, um, put things in the chat box, yeah, I found that really therapeutic. And things came up that I hadn't thought about for years. 
and actually brought a smile to my face. And you're right, mm -hmm. I do feel better after that simple exercise, to the point where I'm going away now, I'm going to get an exercise book <laughs> and start. <laughs> and it will, it will just purely be for my own personal memories, if you like. But yeah, it did, it brought all kinds of things back. You know, I, I, I recalled, um, and I'm sharing now, <laughs> a little electric fire that my sister and I, because it took too long to make up the coal fire in the mornings, a little electric fire we used to sit in front of, you know, with our feet perched up in the morning until the fire was lit up. I wonder about that. that. So that whole exercise has been, yeah, really therapeutic for me. And I, I can't wait to carry it on. So thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, you're very welcome. I, I think it's I think it's very true that it's about someone says one thing and it prompts a memory in you and then it keeps feeding on itself, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've had a couple of comments. I, I love this one from Nikki. It's a such a super uplifting session. Thank you. It brought a smile to my face. But we do have a question from Dale. Is there any cost involved in the RLF courses? So... There is not. No. All you need to do to organise a course is to either contact Matt or Janet or myself. And I think Yusuf is going to put our contact. There you go. Our contact details in there. Um, there isn't a cost. The RLF, because we're a charity, we we fund the writer. So there's no cost to participants, um, which is amazing, isn't it? But that really is true. Um, took me a few years to get over that as well. There is, such a, there is such a thing as a free lunch. Yeah, thank you, A.A. <laughs> Milne, I guess, partly for that one. Yeah. Yes, yes, in part, yes. So, um, and Sean uh, Dixon has put, we access workshops in person online, always well attended. We had learners uh, discussing the use of a single word. Sean uh, was very active with Usdor. I, I seem to recall. If I've got that wrong, yes. Sean, please tell me. Yes, off. no, it was us. Yeah, and, um, yeah, and so I know you've done work with them. Okay, um, well, oh. Roger would like to stimulate manual workers who don't often get time out of work. We want to stimulate writing for literacy. Well, um, I say, as Janet, uh, as Mary said, get in touch with either me, Janet, or her. Um, and Herma, uh, who's, uh, I, I know Herma, she's in Birmingham with um, DWP, says, is there any topic of limit? That's a really interesting question, Herma. I'm, uh, that, thank you for that. Um, what I would say is, um, obviously, when we're working in a group, we need to think about well-being of everybody and there's feelings of safety and safeguarding and so on. So when we're sharing in a group, we would always start a workshop by sort of agreeing sort of ground rules, if you like. Um, so whilst I would say there's no topic off limit, we need to think about the impact of our words or content if there's something particularly distressing, because it's not, as I say, it's not a therapy session. It's, it's, it may have a therapeutic value. Um, so whilst I'd say no, I'd always say there's a sort of uh, the caveat of we need to think about how other people might receive our mm -hmm. our words. I mean, I, I don't want to think for her, but I, I know she's very active with the Equalities Network. In oh, PCS, right. So yeah. I was wondering if maybe is that the way her mind's working there? <laughs> you yeah. know, to talk about think, things to do with equalities. Um, oh, wow. yes. Alan has said, does Mary prefer hard copy communication or the dreaded email? Oh, e the dreaded email every time. <laughs> <laughs> no, email's absolutely fine. Um, I work I work part time just to just note so that I don't look at my emails every day, because if I did, I'd never write anything. Um, but and I, you know, I'm not just a writer of emails, obviously. But but yes, by all means, email. That would be great. Okay, well, that seems to be it for today. Before we go, Janet, remind us again when your ULR forum is, please. It's on the 21st of June in Sheffield, and registration and further details will be available on the Yorkshire and Humber regional webpage. And is that available to everybody in Yorkshire? It's available to ULRs in South Yorkshire. Occasionally we extend them, but this particular one's for South Yorkshire. Okay, brilliant. And remember, on the 8th of July, it's the Midlands ULR Forum, 11 a.m., Coventry CWU offices, but you can dial in if uh, if you want. Um, but, you know, it's great to see people in person, if, if that's possible. We are right by a railway station and there is parking. So there's that. Mary, thank you so much. It was a really good session. I looking at these comments i think it's gone down really well with people they seem to have enjoyed it um thank you for coming along and 
long may your relationship with the trade union continue because it sounds like you've done some great stuff in the past and I hope there can be good stuff in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Matt.